black hole is usually a place in space where no light exists, making it all but impossible to capture on film. Despite this, a team of astrophysicists have managed to photograph a black hole in our galaxy, the Milky Way, for the first time. Palab Ghosh reports. One of the most perplexing questions humans have encountered is where did everything come from? However, a new notion that some people may find frightening brings us closer to the answer. There's a chance that we're actually living in a black hole and that the Big Bang Theory is wrong. What's the reasoning behind this claim? What does it mean if we live in a black hole? In this video, we explain the latest theory, proposing that the Big Bang could have been inaccurate and that we've actually been living inside a black hole this whole time. According to our understanding of the cosmos, it is expanding and cooling. But what came before that? The Big Bang. Before the universe started to expand and cool, most scientists agree that there was nothing before that. Though, not everyone seems to agree. What if everything we see in our universe is just the result of being inside a black hole that was created by another universe? This strange theory says that if black holes that form in our universe give birth to new universes, then our universe might be nothing but a black hole's child. So, what kind of black hole are we in? In the 20th century, we reached a level of scientific knowledge that our ancestors could never have imagined. We found, among other cool things, that faraway objects in the universe are moving away from each other faster and faster, which shows that our universe is getting bigger. We found that galaxies that are farther away look younger, have less mass, and make stars faster. This shows that our universe changes over time. We also found a nearly uniform background of black body radiation, which shows that hot, dense radiation was the main force in the early universe. When all of these puzzle pieces are put together, they show that 13.8 billion years ago, our universe started with a hot Big Bang. But if you add up the mass and energy of all the particles in the visible universe, our universe has this strange property. With this mass, you can figure out how big the event horizon of a black hole would be. And surprisingly, the answer is very close to the actual horizon size of the universe that can be seen. Stephen Hawking also popularized the idea that every time we make a black hole in our universe, we might make a new universe that can only be seen by an observer who goes inside the event horizon of their black hole. But what's the thought process behind these ideas? So, it's really interesting. A black hole can't exist without an event horizon. The boundary tells a different story depending on whether the object is inside or outside of it. Any object outside of a black hole's event horizon will feel its pull, because the black hole warps space, but the object can still escape. It might not fall into the black hole if it moves or speeds up quickly enough in the right direction. It might be able to get away from its pull. But as many science fiction movies have shown, once you or an object crosses the event horizon, it will be eaten by the black hole's central singularity. Because the fabric of space-time is very warped inside a black hole, after crossing the event horizon, an object that's falling into a black hole will reach the singularity within a few seconds. This adds mass to the black hole. From the event horizon, it looks like the black hole forms, gains mass, and grows over time. Now if you add up all the known forms of mass and radiation in the observable universe, you get the following. Normal matter, which is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Neutrinos, which are ghostly fundamental particles that rarely interact with normal matter. Dark matter, which makes up most of the universe's mass, but has so far eluded direct detection efforts. And photons, which carry energy from every electromagnetic event in the universe. Einstein's famous equation says that energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. If you add up all 46 billion light years in all directions, you will get the equivalent mass of the universe. But let's go even further and ask, what would happen if the whole universe was squished into a single point? Well, the answer is the same as if you packed enough mass or energy into a single point. You'd make a black hole. This is one of the things that makes Einstein's theory of gravity so interesting. If this collection of mass and or energy isn't electrically charged and isn't rotating or spinning, that is, it doesn't have angular momentum, the total amount of mass is the only thing that determines the size of the black hole, which scientists call the Schwarzschild radius. Now, wait for it. The Schwarzschild radius of a black hole that holds all the matter in the universe that we can see 
is very close to the size of the universe that we can see, and that fact alone seems like a very strange coincidence, which makes it possible that our universe is the inside of a black hole. But that's just where the story starts. Things get even more interesting as we go deeper. Around the middle of the 1960s, a discovery changed the way we think about the universe. Low-energy radiation came from everywhere in the sky in a uniform all-around bath. The temperature of this radiation was the same in all directions. It has been measured to be 2.725 Kelvin, which is just a few degrees above absolute zero. The radiation looked like it came from a hot thermal source and had a nearly perfect black body spectrum. No matter where you looked in the sky, it looked the same to within one part in 30,000. Before it was renamed the Cosmic Microwave Background, this radiation was called the Primeval Fireball. It showed that our universe is expanding and cooling because it used to be hotter and denser. As we went further back in time, things got smaller, more uniform, and more packed together. This picture of the hot Big Bang looks like it's getting close to its singularity. This is the same thing that happens in the center of black holes, where the density, temperature, and energy are so high that the laws of physics don't apply. But if you look at the equations that describe how a black hole works, you'll notice something amazing. If you start just outside the event horizon and move away from the black hole forever, you'll find that your distance goes from the Schwarzschild radius to infinity. If you start just inside the event horizon and measure the distance from the black hole to the central singularity, you'll find that the same distance goes from the Schwarzschild radius to zero. Is this something to be happy about? Well, yes, it's a big deal, and here's why. If you compare all of the properties of space outside of a black hole's event horizon, from the Schwarzschild radius to all of the properties of space inside a black hole's event horizon, from R to zero, they are the same at every single point. Just replace the distance with its reciprocal, which is one over the distance, and you will see that the inside and outside of a black hole are mathematically the same. It's almost as if you took a sphere that was 100% reflective and saw that the whole universe outside the sphere was now inside it, even though the mirror image that was reflected on the surface of the sphere was distorted. As our knowledge of the universe has grown and grown over the last few decades, two new discoveries have shook the foundations of cosmology. The first was cosmic inflation, which says that instead of coming from a single point, the universe was made by a fast, constant, exponential growth that happened before the hot Big Bang. It's as if space itself had some kind of field that gave off energy, causing the universe to expand and the hot Big Bang to start only when the expansion stopped. What about the second question? This is called dark energy. As the universe expands and gets less dense, galaxies in the far distance move away from us at a faster and faster rate. Again, but on a much smaller scale, the universe acts as if space itself has some kind of energy that doesn't go away, even as space gets bigger. As long as inflation and dark energy have been known to exist, people have thought there might be a link between them. The fact that the expansion rate of the universe is different depending on which of the two types of methods you use to measure it gives that theory more weight. One idea that keeps coming up to explain this difference is that there was a stronger form of dark energy early on, one that existed after the end of inflation but faded away before the cosmic microwave background scattered the primeval plasma for the last time. Maybe inflation and dark energy are more related than we think, and black holes can help us figure out how they are related. So, what could inflation and dark energy have in common? Again, black holes might be the answer. As things fall into them, black holes grow in size and lose mass through a process called Hawking radiation. So, is it possible that if the size of the event horizon changes, an observer inside the event horizon would see a change in the energy of space? Is it possible that our universe started out as an ultra-massive black hole that grew bigger and bigger as time went on? Is it possible that dark energy is also linked to black holes? If so, does this mean that as astrophysical black holes form in our universe, each one makes its own little universe? These ideas have been around for decades, and while there's no conclusive or provable proof, there are some mathematically strong pieces of evidence that point to a connection. Still. This line of thought has a lot of models and ideas, and many people who study black holes, thermodynamics, entropy, general relativity, and the beginning and end of the universe find it interesting. Roger Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology is the most well-known attempt to do this. 
it makes a unique prediction that is different from standard cosmological models. The existence of Hawking points or circles of variance of the cosmic microwave background with unusually low temperatures. Unfortunately, these things don't show up strongly in the data. This means that the idea that our universe came from a black hole and that black holes create new universes is just a guess. But scientists are surprising themselves by agreeing more and more with the idea that we live in a black hole. A group of radical astrophysicists from the University of Waterloo have suggested that the Big Bang be replaced by a black hole. Robert Mann, a professor of physics and applied mathematics, and his colleagues think that we live in a four-dimensional black hole that was made when a five-dimensional star fell apart. Mann says that the idea came from Nyesh Forty, who was also a professor at Waterloo. This was four years ago. The basic idea was that the singularity of the universe could be like the singularity at the center of a black hole. In some ways, the idea came from the desire to bring together the ideas of singularity, or what is called incompleteness in general relativity, in black holes and cosmology. Because of this, the idea that the Big Bang was similar to how a black hole formed grew, but in reverse. Part of the reason why the theory was made was to come up with ideas that were different from standard cosmological pictures of inflation. Professor Mann went on to say that they wanted to connect the holographic ideas, which say that gravitational physics in one dimension of space-time is the same as non-gravitational physics in a smaller dimension. When this was being talked about, it was thought that we would be in the smaller dimension and that, in a five-dimensional universe, there might be a five-dimensional star that could collapse into a black hole in the dimension above us. In the process, a matter membrane explodes, and this membrane was, so to speak, the universe. This idea was a different way to look at the inflationary universe than the most common scenario. Using terms from string theory, they say that our three-dimensional world is just a thin layer of a four-dimensional universe that is much bigger. Instead of our universe going through a time of rapid expansion and cosmic inflation, it was the properties of gravitational collapse in higher dimensions that decided how the universe was put together. The team decided to look into this idea because it was different. Nikodem Poplowski is a theoretical physicist who is also working on the idea that we might exist inside a black hole. In fact, Nikodem has a theory that every black hole has a whole new universe inside it. This scientist says that our whole universe could be inside a black hole that is inside another black hole. He says that a baby universe is a closed space-time branch that has its own timeline and is on the other side of the event horizon from the parent black hole. This means that the baby universe is bigger than the parent black hole. It's like the TARDIS from Doctor Who. You walk into the police box and realize you're in something bigger than the box. Nikodem says that if we follow the Einstein-Cartan theory of gravity, every black hole makes a new universe inside and becomes an Einstein-Rosen bridge or wormhole that connects this new universe to the universe where the black hole is. The parent universe seems to be on the other side of the only white hole in the space of the new universe that can't be reached from the outside. This white hole can be thought of as a black hole in reverse. So, the inside of a black hole in another universe could be our universe. We find that the more we learn about the universe, the more questions we have. Still, this may be the beauty of the universe, the beauty of our cosmos. It is a storehouse of knowledge, experiences, and questions that may go on forever. At this point, we don't know if a black hole created our universe or if we live in one. Maybe soon, when technology gets better and we learn more, we will have enough information to start answering some of these questions. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about this bizarre theory? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.